Now, what is the purpose of the virgin birth? Well, first of all, to reveal God. John 1, 18. Jesus came to declare and reveal the Father to men as a God of compassion and love and a holy God who was sinless. The purpose of the virgin birth was to bridge the chasm between God and man. 1 Timothy 2, 5 says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man, Christ Jesus. How is that for male chauvinism, sister? There is one God, Father, not Mother, one mediator between God and men, the man, not the woman, the man, Christ Jesus. In the Bible, God the Father is male, God the Son is male, God the Holy Spirit is male, the first man made is male, and the woman is from his flesh, male flesh. Bone of his bone, Adam says, and flesh of his flesh. Now, do you see what we mean when we talk about the ecumenical, social, sexual magpionist created by the international socialists who want to set up a uh, amalgamated, synthesized, integrated a race, a conglomerate of passive Ottomans who don't know what's what? The first thing you have to deny is your rational intelligence. After that, you can believe anything. Rational intelligence will show you the truth of these matters in no uncertain terms. They're biblical truths. The purpose of the virgin birth was to save men. Hebrews 2, 14 and 16 make it clear that Christ's purpose in taking on the nature of man and becoming like a man was to taste death for every man and take upon him the seed of Abraham, in order that he might suffer as a man and die as a man, be tempted as a man, and go through what a man goes through. This is worded so strong in Hebrews that the writer says, Though he were a son, yet he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And finally, the Lord Jesus Christ came down here to be born of a virgin to rescue the whole creation. We know the whole creation grown up and travailed and pain together until now, Paul says, waiting for the redemption, to wit, the redemption of our body, to become a kind, compassionate, loving Savior and a Redeemer, God had to take the place of his fallen creation. No other plan will work. There's nothing any guru or chela can tell you in Himalaya. There's nothing the lamas can pull out of Mount Everest. There's nothing the Rosicrucians or the wisdom of this world has ever produced that could solve this simple problem. One, man is separated from God, and God, to be holy and just and righteous, cannot have fellowship with sinful man. Samadhi and nirvana cannot bridge the gap, for the man who goes into the self-hypnotic trance is still a sinner trying to commune with a sinless God. To bridge this gap, the gurus pretend that God is not sinless or sinful, but neuter. So the problem is still unsolved. The problem is only solved by God himself so loving the world that he comes down and produces himself in the flesh as a son of man and the son of God, and coming down producing himself as one of a human race one of the sons of Adam, yet without sin. He becomes tempted in all points like as we are, yet without sin, and that he himself was tempted, he is able to succor them that are tempted also. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, the chastens and our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Only the virgin birth solves the problem of a sinless God redeeming a sinful creation.